Okay, so in grid cell 60, I should have a richness of two species. And then look at 66, I have a whole bunch. Okay? So now, I don't want the individual species. We're trying to map richness. So I'm going to cheat again. And I'm going to use a pivot table. I think I need to add one more column just to make this work. I think I drive my students nuts because I do what works and not what's out, what is elegant. So data, pivot table. Now, here I go. I want I don't care about my species. I want IDs in the rows. There we go. I want dummy as the column label. Dummy is just a list of ones. It only has one value. There will only be one column. And I want a count of the species. So I've got exactly what I want there. Just the row labels and the number of species known from those rows. And these pivot tables are really ugly. They've got all sorts of other stuff in them. So I'm going to copy this and get out. So I'm going to open up another. And there I go. OK? So I'm going to retitle it just so it makes sense. Grid ID and uh, number of species. Now I need to get that back out into QGIS, attached to my grid shape file, and then there was one more complication. So I'm going to save this as comma separated values. I'll call it 2GH. Um, Ox. Uh, okay. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Now I go back to QGIS. Close that. Here I am again. Now I've forgotten which way I brought in the layer. I think it was via the, uh, no. I brought it in as a delimited text layer. This is weird. You'll see why in a second. There's the set I want in there. You can see it's got the information I need. Um, and the weird thing is it won't light up OK until I tell it which is latitude and which is longitude? Dumb question, because neither is. I just want the table in there. And so I worried about that and lost another 10 or 15 minutes. And then I searched on Google and they said, just bring it in as a, as a layer. It doesn't matter. So we do that. We do that. So that's what I just brought in. And here's that table. And I want now to take those grid numbers and those species richnesses and stick them on to this table, the, the table associated with the, uh, the grid. And so I went to plugins. I, got a, I had to find this plugin, MMQGIS, and there's this very nice transfer attributes joined from CSV file. Some of these names are pretty cryptic. So the input CSV file is that. Whoops. Life goes to what happened.
don't know what's the problem there. I vaguely remember that I had chosen the Windows CSV format when I did it over there. This time I just went to the generic CSV. Looks like there's some difference. I got it in. That's all I care about. Um, CSV file field, that's the joining field. Grid ID, there's my uh, 2GH grid. It's join layer, also ID, and I want out. I'll call it 2GH uh, rich. Okay, so there's my new, my new shape file. Let's look at its attributes table, and there we go. And right away you can see now, right away, I can see what my problem is. I wanted just to bring this up and um, and show, show the distribution of number of species. It wouldn't let me. Wouldn't even see that field. Why? The text field. That's why. So what did I what did I have to do? I had to go to editing. had to add a column there. Uh, um, notice that this is not string, which is what my, my num SPP is. This is a whole number. And let's make it maybe four columns wide so I can have up to a thousand species. Boom. It has nothing in it. So I have to go to this field editor, this field calculator, sorry, and look at this, conversions to int, fields and values, that's the one that is the text version and I'm converting it to an integer. Now, why won't it let me do this? So it looks like I have to create yet a different new name. And there I go. And now, see how this field is left justified. That, that's kind of the sign of it being a text field, whereas this field is right justified. That's a number. So I should be able to look at it now the way I want to. I've got to make it stop editing. Yes, please save it. There's my number of species. And let's pick some ramp and classify. And so you're just going to see it with darker values for higher richnesses. And there we go. So 
here's here's what it looks like at a half degree and there in oranges is what it looks like at a third of a degree okay now obviously it depends on having good point data depends on having your species taxonomy good so the long and the short of this is it's all a matter of dedicating time to it. You can generate your authority file from the data, but then you have to go back and make sure that there's not garbage in there. You can generate your authority file from some global taxonomy. Take a look at Catalog of Life, for example. I thought you were getting the IOCH. That's very easy to use on the file. birds of course but we're assuming that you guys only care about birds of Mexico right <laughs> next week <coughs> does that mean go down or what so I'm just gonna go to the HTML oh, Oh. You have to understand we've been fighting with, with each other for a quarter of a century. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. Regardless, it's going to take a, a bit of time. Everybody's hitting Facebook, so it's totally <laughs> parallel. <laughs> so, the simple point is your authority file is critical and it's going to take you time. So, probably the best thing to do if you're not looking at birds, if you're looking at birds, use these lists. If you're not looking at birds, one of the better sources is called Catalog of Life, which is an amalgam of three different um, sources, Species 2000, uh, Itis, and there's one other. And anyhow, you, you look for the best and most relevant list of species. For orchids, you're probably going to have to re reconstruct it from the data, or at least orchids in Ethiopia. Here's Here's the master list. Is that what you want? Master list, yes. This is Excel. Yeah. Thirty-seven seconds. Uh, so there are a bunch of ways to do it, but essentially, what you've got to avoid is synonyms and typos constituting essentially duplicate names, making it look like you have more species. And then of course you're going to have to find all of the names in your occurrence data that don't mesh with your authority list. Okay? And then you want to add the, the attributes to your authority list. Endemism, endangerment, invasive status, things like that gotten longer. So, so that authority list can take you a very long time. And then of course, remember that Adolfo told you that we went out and corralled up all those data. Life is easier now. While it downloads, I can show you the kind of information they have.
This is very easy to use as a authority file because you have the accepted name of the, the species, the authority that described it, but also for purposes of the, the exercise we're doing here, you can choose to use birds. You have the distribution, the general distributions. So very easily, you can you can see the, the species you're working with is endemic to the region you want to, to survey. So very, very easy to use. You can download, 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 download. whatever. Yeah. In the Excel format, and then import it into Access and very easy to connect. What you do is a query, which is a new search, the coincidences among names, and then you manually, what you do is try to fix the inconsistencies. It's very, very easy to do. Trying to look for something that would be a nice endemic in Africa. But I'm stuck in Oceania. So you get the idea. This taxon here is endemic to northern Australia. This taxon is basically found in three countries, the two countries that make up New Guinea and Australia. Okay. Okay, so we threw a lot at you today. If you would like, Paula is here and is kindly offering a walk through the gardens so that you can clear your head. Or if you'd like, you're welcome to stay here. Uh, I guess we will have the cabs leave from here probably just before six, but the gardens are beautiful. I highly recommend a walk. Um, I did that the first day I was here. So if you would like to take a walk, maybe pack up your stuff and be ready in three minutes to, to leave with with Paula, and if you'd like to stay here, I'm happy to try to help with with mapping richness, Adolfo, and possibly Kate. I don't know. If Somebody wants to use my computer to like to learn. The doorstep. Huh? Doorstep. Yeah. Those of you who are keen to walk in the gardens, I'll meet you just with the tea and coffee is in five minutes. Okay. okay.